in today's show. I'm here live on YouTube to take your questions, to answer your questions. Here we are, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. This episode is brought to you by PrizePix. Check out PrizePix.com and use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. PrizePix is daily fantasy made easy. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Here we are, live on the old YouTube, ready to take your questions as we get prepared for Thursday in the NBA. We'll have a pregame show later on today. There'll be a What to Watch For show coming up later as well. And uh, and here we are. So ready to answer questions. Welcome to everyone who is here in the uh, in the chat at the moment. Ready to throw those questions out here. Nick Razbosek. Hey, Josh. First of all, great throw. Thanks. Great throw, not great throw. Great show. Uh, thanks, mate. I owe you my 10-0 no, score. No, you don't. That's all you, mate. Do we have any news on Bam Adebayo? He has been over a month since we heard anything. No, we don't. We don't have any news on him. Um, yeah, you got to think that we're talking you're two weeks away from him returning. Nothing to say that he's ahead of schedule or behind schedule. Hand injuries and thumb injuries generally run right on schedule. They, they are pretty predictable. And when you hear a timetable for that, it's pretty yeah, spot on. Yeah, knees and leg stuff is harder because obviously you can't be doing any work on that. It's a whole bunch of things in terms of stability and yeah, keeping your body upright. Whereas a thumb, you're not like you're mucking around on it. You can keep it isolated and not touch it for so much of that time period. And it doesn't impact all your movement. So they tend to be on schedule and I've got nothing to suggest that um, Bam won't be back on schedule for this team. We hope it will be anyway. Tazarus, Tazarus. Is Al Horford must roster? Yes, he is. Okay. Joshua Hurtado says, will Aldridge become a drop in the future for 10-team leagues? Yes, I think he will be. I think he's probably there now in a 10-team league. You'll have more value streaming in blokes off the waiver wire than holding on to Aldridge with Claxton uh, back and getting the minutes that he is. He'll be better games from Aldridge, but in terms of overall value in a league like that, I don't think so. Um, people love RJ Barrett, man. Sean says RJ looked nice last game. He was better in the second half last season. The boy is still young as hell. He'll be inconsistent, but can ball. Yeah, I know he's still young, but he is inconsistent. But we have seen it for two and a half years that he is not a good fantasy contributor. He'll have a good game, and then he'll go and score 12 points on 13 shots with three rebounds and one assist and no defensive stats. And that's just what happens with him. Until I see it consistently for months in a row, I'm not buying that he's going to be this good player. I'm just not. Um, Barry Baker. Barry, how are you, mate? Chances of Cole Anthony being a top 50, 60 player the rest of the season? Yeah, look, I think he's firmly established himself as a player in that zone. He'll have uh, ups and downs in shooting. I'm not really worried about Markel Fultz, although that could really change. The Magic Watch might say, well, we still think Fultz is our starting point guard. I would be stunned. And I don't know where the hell Fultz fits in with Suggs and Anthony there. I would be stunned if they did that with Fultz coming off an ACL tear, if he ever bloody plays. But um, I feel pretty confident in, um, in Cole Anthony being there. All right. Everyone good? We're all good today. Um, all right, let's have a look at more questions that we have here. Giddy or Vanderbilt, S. Antonio? Well, this is the, the age-old question, isn't it? What do you need? One's a bloke that's getting a ton of assists. Another guy's a big rebounder. Actually, they're both pretty good rebounders, but Vanderbilt's going to be getting you more blocks. Giddy's going to be getting you more assists. Steals probably a bit higher. Giddy's going to have ter- terrifically bad field goal percentage. Vanderbilt's going to have terrifically high field, field goal percentage. It's no, there's no way of being able to answer that question straight up. You have to take your um, team build into consideration. 
Ryan says, I'm always amazed at your ability to convert fractions into percentages at a glance. Have you always been good at math or has this ability developed over the years of doing said shows? Now, I've always been good at maths, but I don't know what you mean. When am I converting fractions into percentages? I don't even know that I was doing that. There you go. Apparently I am, but I appreciate that. Now, I've always been good at maths. You are sounding sick. I know. I have a, uh, I have a sore throat and my voice is going a little bit. I have uh, tested negative for COVID. Hopefully that's, yeah, that, that remains the case. But yeah, my voice is gone and my nose is, it's not really blocked. It just sound a bit, bit off. Okay. Your entire fantasy league found you. I lost my advantage. Good. I'm glad that more people found me, but yeah, bad, bad luck for you. Not that I'm the, the best at everything because I'm obviously not. Um, Jim Russo, if Nance misses extended time, will Nasir Little be must roster? Probably. Yeah, look, it boosts his value up. But he's, I don't think still on a per-game basis that Nasir Little is that great that under all circumstances, he's got to be rostered. Like, he'll have ups and downs. He does lack in certain categories. He can be iffy with his percentages at times. He can be a good scoring guy and a good rebound guy. But they do tend to play him more at the three than at the four. Uh, I still think that if Nance does miss time, though, I would be grabbing him in 12-team leagues, yes. Um... What do you do to not let fantasy bother you? I'm a non-stop champion. Good for you. <laughs> but this year has been a stinker for me. Uh, how does it not bother me? Uh, it's my job. So I have to make sure it doesn't bother me. And my focus almost entirely is on you know, doing projections, on writing articles, on recording shows, in answering questions, in providing league-wide overviews rather than narrowly focusing in on my one singular team. That's why people say, hey, hey, show us your team and show us all the moves you make. Like, I don't focus on my teams that much. I, I, I don't have the time to be so narrow. I couldn't even tell you the players that are on my teams because I have to be paying attention to 500 players in the NBA versus 13 players on one of my roster, one of my roster. So I couldn't tell you who I've got because I know the amount of, that I know about each player across the league, not just what's happening with those 13 players on my roster. So it is hard for me to answer that because my um, my my uh, attention goes uh, to to the whole league rather than just my team. Matija Radikovic, should he Jack Armstrong Lyles with Isaiah Stewart back? Yeah, I'll do it for you. Get that garbage out of here! Um, Jonathan Isaac updated to doubtful. Was he? I have not seen that. Wow, out of nowhere, John Isaac from the top rope. Let's go and have a look at that. Um. Uh, we're, we're actually, where are you seeing that? Because I haven't seen that. Is that a lie? Anyway, don't know. Don't add him because John Isaac is going to be very limited in minutes. He's going to miss plenty of games. I don't think that he's going to be this great option. Um, where are you seeing this John Isaac thing? That sounds like an absolute lie to me. Apologies to you, you. But I just have not seen it. I thought I would have seen that. All right, let me just... Do a quick search. Anyone got any news on that? It'd be great if you could tell me about it, because it does not does not sound um, does not sound right at all. But before I get into that, I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you about Price Picks. I've been talking about Price Picks for a while now, and it's something that you guys really need to get into. You're missing out if you're not doing it. It is the app for NBA DFS props, the best one out there. It is the best prop game on the market. You go in there, some of these other apps, they just only have the superstar players, not price picks. They have everybody, even the bench guys. Price picks offers any prop you can think of from points and assists, rebounds, threes, fantasy points, all of that. You get two to five players and their individual props, combine them together, and you can win up to 10 times your entry. And it's not just basketball. You can smash together other sports into that single entry. So go to sign up and use the code NBA. You can get a 100% instant match deposit bonus up to $100. Use that award-winning app or go to the website, pricepicks.com. Make sure you are using the code NBA and go and put your entry in. Withdrawals are safe and fast as well. So go to pricepicks.com today. Use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app. PricePix is daily fantasy made easy. If you're not playing PricePix, you honestly don't know what you're missing. Um, Yeah. There it is. That is the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. 
Reach customers online across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Gain insights as you grow with de detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. It's more than a store. Shopify grows with you. So go to shopify.com slash locked on MBA, all in lowercase, and get a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash locked on MBA right now. That's shopify.com slash locked on. MBA. All right. Um, back to the chat. Anyone got anything to say on this Jonathan Isaac thing? Any news on Kelly Linux? We'll, we'll get back to Isaac in a second. Um, news on Linux seems to be up and down. It's like, oh, he's a fair way away now. It's like, oh, no, he's actually working on the bike and he's going to return. I still think we're probably two weeks away from a Linux returning and that's going to put him too close to Jeremy Grant's return to have significant value. I don't mind adding him, but with so many players out, are you really going to want to stash an injured bloke for two weeks who's not that high in terms of uh, value? Any more news on Hartenstein? Nothing. We haven't heard when he's coming back. It looks like he's going to be out for the rest of this week. Uh, we hope it's soon, but we just haven't heard anything which is frustrating because he would have had a great opportunity um, to yeah, put up big numbers with Zubats in COVID protocols. Does the waving of Cousins increase Bobby Portis's value, Jim Russo asked. I don't think... Um, I, I, I don't think it's going to change too much. I don't think that Cousins was impacting Bobby Portis's minutes. Cousins was there, but really Portis was playing as much as he could. Portis is a gigantic defensive liability as well. So that's why they don't play him 40 minutes most nights. Who is the Clippers' first option for scoring with Paul George out? I reckon they have got two number one options. Reggie Jackson and Marcus Morris. They seem to me to be the clear top two guys. Um, Sophie Nguyen says, Reggie Jackson is ranked 169th in 9-cat roto. Is he a drop? Well, Sophie, that's going to really depend on your team. Now, Nightcat Roto is obviously taking into account turnovers and he's pretty bad there. But often, again, that number will skew if you're using a full value turnover because in a Roto League, for sure, there's going to be a couple of people at the bottom of your league who have stopped competing, who have stopped making moves, and they're the guys who are the top in, in turnover points. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, your league might be super competitive. But if you're looking at the, the top contributors or who's got like the 12 points or the 11 points in a Roto League, Almost always, it's going to be the teams who are down the bottom of the standings because they haven't played as many games. They're not making as many roster moves. And that means that the value of you having like a three in a roto category is not as egregiously bad because the teams who have got the top scores in that are right down the bottom. So when looking at that value of Reggie Jackson, is his positive contributions in his assists and his scoring and his threes... They still they still might be useful for him. I, I can concede that maybe he is a drop, especially with a negative field goal percentage that he provides. But overall, I wouldn't just look at that number that number and go, well, yeah, he's a clear drop because the turnovers do really change that quite a bit. Um, how do I feel about Malik Monk moving forward this season? I really don't. I don't know what they're going to do when Kendrick Nunn returns. They should just play Monk all these minutes the whole time. I don't think Nunn is particularly good. Anyone who listened to this podcast for a long time will understand my thoughts on Kendrick Nunn as a player. Um, I, I, think Nunn, uh, I think Monk's got value to at least be a top 120 guy rest of season, but it could absolutely go sideways really quickly. But for now, he's a must-rostered player. Ben All Day says, do I think Kyrie gets vaccinated or the laws change? The laws change? No way. I don't think there's any chance of that. Um, there's news of both being a possibility with his interview yesterday and a new law in New York where athletes can play, can pay to play home games. I haven't seen anything about that new law in New York. That sounds pretty ridiculous uh, that they're paying to play. I don't know about that. Um, I think there's a higher chance of Kyrie getting vaccinated personally, but I would just put but the the, I'd put the chances of both of those things happening being pretty low. What are the odds Paul George comes back before All Star break? I reckon they're pretty low. When do I predict Melton will be back? Um, well, I think currently he's questionable for today. So if he's not back today, um, he might be back the next game. So it's going to be really, really quickly. Is Nasir Little must roster just like Anthony Simons? No, he is not like Anthony Simons. Simons, you have over Little pretty clearly, I think. Do I think Yurt7 has value when Bam and Deadman come back? Absolutely not. And I, that's maybe being harsh. 
I can easily see him remaining as the backup center ahead of Deadman, and that has value for 16, 18 team leagues. But I do not think that Yoma Yetzevan is playing 30 minutes a night when Bam Adebayo returns. That would mean that he's playing as... And remember, Markeith Morris is also out along with Bam and along with Deadman. And while Yetzevan's had some good moments, I don't think he's been that good that they're going to say, all right, Markeith, if Markeith ever plays, um, PJ Tucker, we're going to cut your minutes way down. Deadman, you're out of the rotation, so you had seven can play 30. I just can't. Maybe I'm wrong. I could very well be wrong. Maybe I'm just completely misreading how they're valuing him. I just don't think that's the case at all. Is Devin Vassell a clear drop right now? He's not worth the hold. Yeah, look, he's out now with COVID along with Derek White. This was a huge opportunity for Vassell, and I thought he played well in the last two, three games. But... If you are in a situation where you need to create roster spots to stream guys in, I still think for sale, like COVID might mean he's out three games. And remember, COVID protocols is like six, seven days at the moment for a player to be out. It's not a huge long-term situation. But Vassal is more fringy. And I do think that he can have a top 100 run through February, March, April. I think that's possible. But yeah, if you want to move on, it's, it's not a problem at this point. Is Garland a sell high? Just a bit? Not really. Like, I, I don't know who's coming back into that team that is going to impact him. Osman, not really. I think what Garland's doing is relatively sustainable. What are the chances Cameron Johnson starts over Jay Crowder? I'd say they're less than 20%. Oh my God, the, the, the bloody Pacers are going to sign Lance Stevenson, the dickheads. They've just waived Keelan Martin. They are, they are kidding me. Jesus Christ. Um... Oh my God, that's, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> how do I feel about Terrence Ross long-term? I think there's a really high chance that Terrence Ross, Terrence Ross gets traded and his value goes completely in the toilet. Did we get an update on Larry Nance today, by the way? I haven't seen one. I Yeah, I don't, do we get any, someone asked me a question about the injury to Nance. Uh, yeah, we haven't got any update at all on it yet. Yeah, Jesus, I can't believe they're going to... Are they seriously going to sign Lance Stevenson? Jesus Christ. That's rough, man. Um, all right, more questions coming through. Yeah, no news on Nance, by the way. Is Bain a sell high? If so, what type of player would you target? I believe firmly that he is a sell high player. But that would mean getting a top 40 guy back. Otherwise, you ride out this little peak... He'll be back probably next game with this yeah, uh, quad injury. And then we'll see him and Melton and Brooks and Morant all play together. And we'll see the value, I think, drop off. Will it drop off to where he's unrosterable? Probably not. Is there a chance it pushes him outside the top 100? Yeah, there is. But don't do anything outside of yeah, trading for, yeah, at the very worst, a top 50 player. Just write out what you're getting. Max Mandel, what is my inside source to this Dame news? I can't tell you who my sources are. I don't know how sources work. Someone told me this information and they know. And they're the same person who told me about the Dame injury at the start of the season. And this is what they told me this time. Again, the first one turned out to be 100% true. We'll see what this one turns out to be. I can't tell you who my source is though. Would the Locked On Network ever let you put on an apprentice? I don't know. Intern? You want a paid internship? Who knows? You never know. Stuff can happen. Guys, that stuff that can happen is eating Bilt Bars because Bilt Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. If I'm looking for a healthy snack, I'm not going to candy bars because that's garbage. It's full of calories. It's full of fat. No one wants that. I want Bilt Bar because they are jam-packed with protein. They are jam-packed with taste, but they are low in fat, low in carbs, low in sugar, and low in calories. And with the new year, we've all got new goals to try and not be as much of a fat prick as we've been in the past or to get more jacked and have more protein or whatever, but do it in a delicious way. And that's what Built Bar does. Most of these bars have got 130 calories and just four grams of sugar, but also 17 grams of protein. It is huge. So go find your secret treats or find anyone's secret treats, chuck them in the bin, stack it up with Built Bars. And you can do it by going to built.com by using the promo code LOCKED15. You will save 15% off your order. Built Bar is built different. Okay. Um, 
Is there a high chance Portland shuts down CJ along with Dame after the All Star break? CJ does not have an injury that would necessitate that. Like, very, very rarely do you get that happened to Al Horford last year in a very unique circumstance. Do you just get a player that is healthy and they say, well, you're not playing? I know CJ's got this lung issue, but if CJ returns to play, they won't just say, you're not playing again after this. The NBA won't let, won't let that happen. Right, so unless he gets hurt, and CJ gets hurt all the time, uh, unless he gets hurt, no, that's just not what's going to happen, I don't think. Um. Okay. What's Paul George's trade value? It's whatever you can get back from him in a deal. Like, I, I wouldn't want to be trading for Paul George when there's a chance he misses the season. Um, it's not high, and it's the worst time to trade him away, to be honest. But if you are worried about him missing the season, if you get a top 40 guy back, then do it. What are my thoughts on Thomas Bryant's return? I've given it plenty of times, but my number one thought is he's back in one to two weeks, and he might not even play every night. What do you do with Rashawn Holmes? He's been underwhelming since Bagley starts beside him. You do nothing, you hold him. You do absolutely nothing with Rashawn Holmes. You just hold him and he will be better. Is Omer Yurt 7 a sell high? Yes. Yep, absolutely he is. I don't think anyone will buy it, but yes, he is. Um, let's have a look. If the Pacers sign Lance, how does it affect Levert? Lance Stevenson is a 31-year-old player who hasn't played in three years, who has not been good for six years and was good for like one season. Um, he will play as a reserve guard. That's it. Like fill in some of the TJ McConnell minutes. It won't have an impact on the guys that they actually view as good players. The obsession with Lance Stevenson is bad, man. What do you do with Hamadou Diallo? You drop him. What is Booker's trajectory in nine cat the rest of the way? I think it's just flat. Like it's just doing what he's currently doing. I don't really see huge amounts changing for Booker there. Is Sabonis a sell high? Not really. He had a good game yesterday and the game before that he was bad. So unless you're basing a sell high off of one game, um, no, I don't, I don't. If someone buys it, sure. But I just don't think that's going to be possible. Do I think Cade Cunningham can finish the season um, in the top 50? From here on out, yes. Whole season, if we look back at the end of the season, I don't think he'll end up as top 50, but from here on out, yes. Winners says, is Jason Tate must roster? I wouldn't say he's a must. I'd say he's fine to have in a 12-team league, um, but I wouldn't say he's an absolute must. Okay. Let's, what else have we got? Does it make sense for the Nets to tank seeding for a lower seed to get four away games of Kyrie come basketball playoff time? Yes, it does. And that's how stupid this whole situation is. It does make sense for them to do that. So if they do have to play a game seven, it ends up being on the road and Kyrie can play. So yes, that does make sense for them. Um... Ryan says, as COVID and all the players coming in and out of the league made your job more enjoyable or stressful? I'd imagine talking about the likes of Trent Forrest and Ahmed Carver would have its benefits. Um, now, I'd say it's more stressful because it's just trying to find, not, not only just keep a track of when players' contracts end, which is tough, like, are they still on the roster, are they not? Um, but also trying to balance out rest of season's projections when you've got 23 players on a roster and trying to figure out how many games they're actually playing, how many minutes they're playing. Like some guys get signed and then never play. Trying to balance that stuff does become pretty difficult. So I'd say more stressful for sure. Um, is Bumba a sell high? Which player can I target? Bumba had two shocking games and then played okay yesterday. So I wouldn't say that he is a sell high. Like who's buying that as a sell high? What players can you target? If you could get any top 50 player for Bumba, it's, you absolutely do it. You're probably not going to be able to do that though. I'd be more inclined to just hold him, get some better games out of him. And then like at some point, his value might drop. But I wouldn't be thinking there's a huge amount happening there with him in, in the trade market. What do I think Fred Van Vliet's market value is? Emily asks. Emily, I would suggest his market value is significantly lower than his actual value is. Like this is a top... 10 top 11 player this season 
And if you were to suggest to trade him for another top 10, top 11 player, nobody would buy that. So yeah, I don't think there's... Like, I know he's like third over the last two weeks or something. No one is going to buy that. You have no ability to sell high on Fred Van Vliet. I think he is considerably underrated consistently. And I, I just think that, yeah, his market value is significantly lower than his actual value. Um, okay. Is Fultz still worth a hold? When was he worth a hold, Juice Shine? He's not. He hasn't been all season. No. Is Boyan Bogdanovich must roster in 10 teams? Well, you're asking that after he dropped like 36 and 10 or something yesterday. So probably yes. Um, Jordan War up or Jordan Clarkson back to back Friday, Saturday. Give me Clarkson. I, I know War is playing pretty well at the moment. I just feel more comfortable with the more established player in Clarkson. And War can be very, very uh, all over the place. Does Chetty Osman become 12 team must roster when he returns Friday? I think that that is a possibility. I wouldn't label him that yet, but he's absolutely someone that I would grab to see how his role looks. What's the next sneaker that you're gunning for? <sighs> Good question. Um, I like the Jordan for Red Thunder. Interested in those. Um, the Dunk Low Barbershop. I don't even know if we'll get those here, but I want those. What else am I interested in? They're probably the ones that come to mind at the moment. Unless there's something else that I'm missing. Is Melton must roster in 14 team? Yes, Zaid, he is. What do I think about DeMar's back-to-back -back game winners? Amazing. Oh, fantastic, Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan. Unbelievable he was able to do that. He's been so, so good this year. I, I'd say it's by far the best year of DeMar DeRozan's career. What do we choose between Winslow, Ibaka, Batum, T. Jones? Who's T. Jones? Amir, oh, Tyus Jones? Uh, and Amir Coffee the rest of the week. I will take, without knowing how many games they play, off the top of my head, I would take Jones there. Faku Kampazu MVP says, does the Cousins release indicate anything regarding Brook Lopez? I think that's a possibility. I don't know that for sure, but I do think that that is a possibility. Um, but again, it, it could also just be literally his contract was about to guarantee and they wanted to have flexibility. But I'm not ruling out the Brook Lopez part. Stash Kelly O, you realize Janice, there's two Kelly O's, and I'm assuming you mean Alinic. Will he be shut down? Just, I'm about to mute the word shut down. It is the most horrifically misused and overused word in fantasy. Why, why would he be shut down? The season has got three and a half months to go. He's probably coming back in a couple of weeks. Unless there's been some setback, why would they just say, sorry, Kelly, don't play for the other three months? I just, it just gets overused. Is Harrison Barnes a buy low? Yes, Hayden, I believe he is, but he's also not going to be anywhere near as good as he was to start this season. Have well, I seen the new Kyrie Eights and Kevin Durant? Yes, I like them. I think they're probably more for actual playing basketball rather than as a, as a fashion sneaker. Um, but I do like them. They're, I don't, I've never had Kyrie's, but I've, I have a few pairs of Kevin Durant's and they've always been pretty comfortable. Do I think the Nets will keep starting Claxton moving forward? I think they'll keep moving it around, to be honest. I think that they will um, yeah, maybe start Aldridge when Irving is out. Is CJ back before All-Star? Yeah, I believe he'll be back in a week or two, is, is my understanding. Joe says, this is a good point. Kevin Love's minutes have increased over the last couple of weeks, even with the Cavs front court all healthy. Barring injury, do you think he can sit at 28-30 the rest of the way? I reckon 28-30 is maybe high, but he has been playing that. So it is really interesting what they're doing with his playing time. And I think, yeah, with the absences on the wing and in the backcourt, it's meaning Lowry is playing almost exclusively as a three, and that's what's helping Love's minutes. So, yeah, look, 26-plus, I think, is realistic now for Love as we move forward. And I probably do need to make some adjustments to his overall projections because of the way those minutes... I'm just looking at his recent games here. 32, 29, 30, 29, 29. Yeah, that is a significant jump. And I, I do think that a large part of that has been... The, uh, the absences of guys like Okoro and Osman. But when those two guys come back, yeah, will Love still have that same... Yeah, we'll still be playing 29 and 9. That, that's where maybe I, I get a little bit uh, iffy on the overall value there of Kevin Love. Is Kuzma's output sustainable? Not even close. Not remotely. He's playing like 41 minutes a night, taking every shot in the book. There's about three or four high-volume rotation players out. No, it is not sustainable at all. 
Who is the pickup on the Spurs with half the team in COVID protocols? Let me just go to the Spurs and we'll, just, we'll be able to get, get out of here in a second. So there's no Keldon, there's no White, there's no Vassell, there's no McDermott. Um, McDermott should be back soon. Lonnie Walker could return next game. Um, I... Oh. Okay. So what I think that they could do, oh, I think they'll probably start Bryn Forbes. He's not a good uh, fantasy option usually. I'm really, really watching to see. I think Lonnie Walker, we have to stream in just because he'll get some high volume scoring opportunities. I think what we have to look at is Cater Bates Diop as an option. And I'm really hoping they give Josh Primo an increased role. This is the opportunity. No White, no Vassal, no Keldon. There's an opportunity for Primo. I don't think he'll be a 12 team league player, but there is an opportunity there. So I would say it's Walker, then probably Bates Diop. Then we go Jones, Forbes, Primo. But most of these guys, I don't think, will end up being your 12-team guys outside of streaming. Lonnie has got a terrible fantasy game, but there is an opportunity for some good minutes for him if he returns. And then maybe Forbes can be a streamer for points and threes. All right, let's do one more question. Butterhan Bush says, does Max the Winter Soldier Struess have long-term value? A lot of people ask me, why is he called the Winter Soldier? Because he looks like Sebastian Stan. That's why. Um, does he have long-term value? Well, think, think about it this way. Yeah, look, he's playing well. But as I will always suggest in these situations, every team's got to have 240 minutes to distribute in a game. And when this team is you know, healthy and ready to go, well, not even healthy and ready to go. Look, let's just assume that you know, Butler is back. You've got 30 plus for Butler, 30 plus for Hero, 30 plus for, for Lowry. You've got 30 for Tucker. You've got 30 plus for Yurtseven. And then you've got Vincent, Struess, Martin, Duncan Robinson to fill out the rest of the rotation roles. And there just isn't enough there for, unless one of those guys is out of the rotation entirely, Vincent, Struess, um, Martin, or Robinson, there's not enough there for Struess to have 30 minutes a night. They're, they're, I just don't see how there is. Last game, there was no Butler, there was no Vincent, and then Lowry got ejected at halftime. And that enabled Struess's minutes to go up. And previously, when he played those 30 minutes, and he played a huge role prior to that, there was no Butler for most of those games. There was no PJ Tucker for some of those games. And that really boosted his value there as well. There's no Caleb Martin, I think, in that time as well. So we haven't seen a situation where Robinson, Hero, Butler, Vincent, Struess, Martin are all playing. Lowry. We Actually, that's not true. We saw it at the start of the year, and Struess was getting like 15 minutes. And that's the worry. He's been playing well, but whose minutes do you cut? Because it's not Lowry, it's not Hero, it's not Butler. Do you cut Robinson to a 16-minute a night player? Maybe. You're not cutting Tucker or the centers. Do you take Martin out of the rotation or Vincent? That's that's the tough part of it, I think. Um, of trying to find where those minutes come from. All right. I reckon that we might uh, wrap that up about now yeah that's about it thanks everyone for being a part of the show and for tr uh, tuning in watching the show and contributing your questions follow this podcast on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, stitcher spotify and on the odyssey app if you are here on youtube and you're here live give it a thumbs up on your way out guys we are done here thank you so much for listening everyone see ya